So last week we talked about coloring in Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Now that was just the basics and I wanna kinda of keep along with that theme in this video and talk about one of the more advanced features in Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. So everybody knows about the basic coloring tools in Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom. Those being vibrance, saturation, white balance. Uh, those are sort of the, the basic tools and they can get a lot done in your images. But there's a few other tools that are, I would kind of argue, they're sort of hidden in Adobe Lightroom and not a lot of people even know they exist. Now this tool I'm talking about is called the Tonal Curve. Now if you've ever seen the Tonal Curve, you might kind of assume it's only for adjusting the brightness of the image, maybe, you know, adding contrast or less contrast. Um, but it's actually a very, very powerful coloring tool um, if you know how to use it properly. So I'm gonna go over how to use this tool and we can go together and edit um, a photo and show you how it kind of works. So before we go over this tool, I do wanna go over a few basics of just how color works in um, cameras and, and on computers and screens and stuff like that uh, because it works a lot different than you may have been taught in elementary school. Now in elementary school, you learned about the primary colors, those being red, yellow, and blue. Now red, yellow, and blue, you know, if you mix them together using paints, you can make any color. Red, yellow makes orange, yellow and blue makes green, red and blue makes purple. So you can get all the colors, but that's not how color works on computers and cameras. If you were to mix green and red paint, um, you know, actually painting like finger paints or something like that, you'd probably get like a brown color. It wouldn't be very appealing. But if you mix red and green on, you know, Photoshop or something like that, it's gonna end up being yellow. That's just how it works. And I'm not really gonna go over the finer points. Maybe I'll do that in a, a different video, but that's just kind of what you have to be thinking. now. Why is this important? It's important for a few reasons, because you kind of need to know how the colors in your image are going to interact with each other. This is just kind of what you have to be thinking about, and I think this will make a little bit more sense when I show you um, a real image that we're gonna edit right here. So here is a, uh, a very basic image of uh, the Chrysler building in New York City. So you see, it's just sort of, um, I guess, you know, a little bit of a blue up here, some uh, orange, yellow, smog. And honestly, this isn't a very appealing image to me. And it's actually an image that I sat on for probably two, two years. I didn't like how it looked. I couldn't really get the image right. And it didn't matter if I added saturation, it would just end up getting worse. You see that? I mean, that, uh, you know, kind of gross reddish orange is not something that I wanted in my image. So, like I said, we're gonna be going over the tone curve right here, and you see this is the tone curve, and you know, it adjusts the, the brightness of certain parts of the image, and I'm just gonna kinda of leave it like that. Um, and I mentioned there's sort of a hidden part in this, uh, in this tool, and it's right down here. You'll notice this button that says, click to edit point curve. So I'm gonna click on that, and you'll see uh, the curve didn't really change from before, so that's before, after, so it's still basically the same curve. So you'll notice in the background here, we have uh, a histogram. And if you remember back to the episode I did about histograms, um, the right side of the image is uh, related to the brighter parts of the image, and the left side is related to the darker sides of the image. So right here would probably be the sky, and then over here would probably be the darker portions of the building. Now, this is the cool part of this tool. Now, if you click on this little drop down menu, you have red, green, and blue. Now, all these look basically the same, and you can still see that it has a little bit of a histogram back there. But all of these, each one is editable um, separate from each other. So if I edit the blue, I can edit it differently than. Um, the red and the green. So let's start with the green just so, cause I think this will be the best um, example of what's happening here. So um, let's say uh, I wanna edit the darker, like the shadowed portion of this building right here. 
If I click right here, it's gonna make a point. And what this point is basically saying is I wanna change um, how bright the green channel is on certain parts of the image. So right here, it's in the dark portion. If I were to drag it up to the uh, the top here, this would be the, uh, the brighter portion. This would be the sky, but I wanna bring it down here. So if I drag this down, it's going to take blue out of the image and more heavily on the darker side of the, the image. And then if I bring it up, it's gonna add green. So you see the green is really, really affecting the image now. And then let's say I wanna make uh, the sky more purple. I can take green out of the sky. So you have a purple sky and you see like a little bit of a green tint down there on the building. And I think it looks disgusting. So I'm gonna take that out. And there we go. And if you ever want to delete a point, all you have to do is double click on it and it'll remove it. So what I'm gonna start with is red because uh, the most important part about using this tool is knowing what you want your image to look like in the end. You know, at least uh, a general idea of what you want it to look like. So my idea is I want the sky to be sort of a purple magenta and then maybe I want to retain a little bit of the, the uh, dark blues and purples um, on this side of the building right here. So my first thing I'm going to do is remember back to the color wheel. Now blue and red mixed together makes magenta. So if I want the sky to be magenta and purple, then I want to add, uh, I want to add red and I want to add blue and maybe take away green. So remember the right side of the image is bright. So um, this is where it's going to be uh, related to, but this is the important part of the tool. Now I probably should have re uh, introduced this a little bit earlier, but this is the important part. If you notice this number right here, it says adjust point curve by dragging in the photo. So I'm going to click on that. And what this allows me to do is adjust based on uh, the value that my, um, my pointer is clicking over. So you'll notice, I want you to look right here and you'll see like a little ball moving around as, as I move the mouse. So this is the sky, the bright portion of the image, and then here's the dark portion of the image, which is the building. So if I were to click and drag right here, it'll affect mostly the, uh, the darker portion of the image. But I wanna, like I said, I wanna affect the sky. So I'm just gonna drag this up a tiny, tiny bit. Not, not a lot, just to add a little bit of effect to here. And then I also wanna add blue. So if I click here, I can add a little blue and you see it's adding some purple to the image. Just a little bit, I don't want too much. So there we go. And then I'm also going to take a little bit of green out. And there you have like a nice saturated magenta and purple in the sky. And then um, I'm going to go back to red. Now this is the part that I'm going to start editing the shadowed portion in the image. So what I'm gonna do is, because I want this to be a little bit more blue, um, I'm gonna be dragging down the red and the green to kind of shift the image towards blue. So you see there, it's bringing, I'm bringing the red down here and it's adding some blue. And then I'm also gonna go to green and take a little bit of green out of that portion of the image. So I think that's a little bit too much. Oops. So here we go. I'm just gonna drag this portion up cause I messed up. All right, and there we go. I think that looks like a good finished image. So if you remember what the image looked like before, it's a pretty big difference before after. So look at that. Look at the difference here. Before, you know, you had just kind of a bland looking image and after you have a nice cohesive image where all of the colors are very complementary towards each other versus before where you had kind of, a, I mean, even though it doesn't look like there's a lot of colors here, there really are a lot because you have everything from blue, a little bit of yellow, you know, red, some orange right here. And when you're introducing all of those colors together, that's kind of what makes it look like a crappy image or just an image that's not as pleasing to the eye versus this one where 
almost the entire image is only, um, you know, I guess sort of like red, um, purples, blues. That's kind of the theme that I'm going with here. So I think this is incredibly important for you in uh, just going back to some of your old photos that maybe you couldn't get the color perfect on. This tool can help you to um, really kind of coax colors out that you didn't really know were there or that just you couldn't get previously with some of the old tools um, like white balance and saturation. Um, Cause it's something that I struggled with for a while and I was able to breathe you know, like new life into a lot of my old images um, just by using this tool. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, I think this is a very unknown tool that I think a lot of people could really, really benefit from. Um, and as you saw, this is great for some of your old images. You know, like if, uh, if you had a picture, if you're in LA or New York or Chicago, something like that, and the image was really ruined by a lot of smog, this is kind of a way to get that disgusting smog color and kind of maybe turn it into something that looks at a little bit more pleasing to the eye or just doesn't look like smog in general. There's a lot of different ways that you can use this tool in your future images. So um, I do wanna thank you guys for watching the whole video. I really, really appreciate it. If you can, give me a like or even leave a comment. Let me know how you like this video or do you have ideas for videos in the future? Um, if you do, let me know and I can maybe make some videos based on what you want for future weeks. Um, so once again, I wanna thank you guys for watching the entire video and I will see you on the next one.